happy Taurus season. Yeah, I'm at astro.com for anybody who wants to check in. I see, I see you, Fields. I was, I'm actually watching the, um, I don't know if you're watching it too, but I'm watching this Mars Jupiter. Is that what it is? No, the moon, Jupiter. No, the moon, Mars, in relation to what we're watching. And it's like, yeah. So, <clears throat> also the other thing, yeah, just, yeah, and that's kind of why I jumped on. It's like my new addiction. Thank you, my new hobby. Okay, so I'll be very careful with this. <laughs> an adventure I'm also watching the moon once it gets to Libra but that'll be a little while okay excitement but yes Taurus season we have the Sun at zero degrees Taurus Mercury one degree Venus six degrees Uranus ten degrees the next Two weeks, 10 days are going to be kind of incredible. Very much an earth energy. This can also combine with the Gemini and the Aquarius energy because these are like psychic downloads information, communications, the web of communication, times, all of this earth energy. Once Saturn's retrograde begins, Actually, I need to check my ephemeris on that because I don't know how much time that will need before that happens, but I just noted in my head the Saturn trine, the north nodes, and Gemini. Pretty soon the node will move to 10 degrees. That'll be a sextile with Uranus, but we're going to have some major breakthrough energy coming with um, all of this Taurus energy. And then once it hits Uranus, that'll be close to the Scorpio full moon coming, yeah? I don't know the exact degree on that, and if I go find it, I'll lose this. If anybody has a question on this, let me know. But a breakthrough coming. Earthquakes, volcanoes. Let me see what else I'm noting before. This can, even though it's a fiery card, this can represent like a joyous celebration, a wedding. So with Venus and the sun... In Taurus, it's actually a really good time to break through, fall, up, fall in love, have some breakthroughs in different areas. So the moon will be moving through Leo, and that will create a square. So where the moon is at 20, if anybody else is looking at... Um, astro.com but as the moon moves into Leo it will square this Taurus energy and the moon is moving faster so she'll the Sun Mercury Venus Uranus I my Wi-Fi may be absent as she's doing that okay so she, let's see 
Sun, the Sun and Mercury are going to conjoin. Then they'll be right up there next. To, wow, we have a we're gonna have like a Taurus stellium, and that'll create a square with the Aquarius, the Leo when the Moon gets to Leo, and then once again when the Moon gets to Scorpio. So that could be a, a tension energy that we can work through in navigating. And whichever houses these are in your charts, like for mine it's one, seven, four, and what is it, ten? So partnerships, housing, money, things like that. Yes, I can absolutely see it popping up in my chart. Okay, be right back. Let's do this. <clears throat> Flip. So this is what I'm looking at. And we see here Mars, Gemini. We have this moon, Cancer, that's a semi-sextile. And I'm tracking it with this <laughs> and I'm watching as those become more exact and then I'm watching as the sun moves so we are going to hi hi there everybody oh sorry about that So I am watching this, and this is what I'm doing. We're going to have a Venus Saturn square over the weekend, so that's going to be incredibly exciting. Give me some um, either restrictions revolving money or love, relationships, the easing of boundaries, cash flow in, out. So let it flow your way. <laughs> let it flow to you. It does feel, for me as a Taurus sun, it does feel like a lot of earth energy. Okay, and this just, yeah. So here we go. We can see how the Venus square Saturn can show up. Hierarchy, structures, breakthrough. As the moon moves through and that square is created and then the moon moves to Scorpio that square will be activated again in the opposition yeah as it as the world turns Let's let us show Cha cha cha. This energy is flowing. So, ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. We're coming into a retrograde season after the full moon, like the very next day, Pluto begins its retrograde stations. And then as we move through May and June, we have, I was actually highlighting some things, I thought somewhere, but now I don't recall where I made my notes. Where did 
did I write all this down? Is that another timeline? Possibly. Yeah, 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 it's exciting. I don't remember where I put my notes for the upcoming June 25th, yeah, basically like June is kind of incredible. Hold on, let me look at May first though, because now that I found it, I know where I wrote in May as well. Okay, so actually, funny story. Okay, so it's eclipse season. As eclipse season begins, um, when the sun moves into Gemini, so we'll have our full moon in Scorpio coming up. Then Pluto will begin its retrograde cycle. Then as we move through May, we're gonna have all this explosive energy with Uranus and ooh, a lot's going on. And then as we have our new moon Gemini, no, I'm sorry, that was a new moon Taurus. Then as the, let's see, May 19th. Okay, so the Saturn begins its retro May 23rd. Then we have this really huge eclipse on May 26th, 19 degrees Gemini, which is actually exact my moon. My Wi-Fi might be out, but. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> then Mercury begins a retrograde. Then we move through June. So all of this is happening. And then especially in June, we have Venus moving into Cancer. Mars moving into Leo. Oh. Mars is also moving into Cancer. <laughs> That's going to be a big one because Mars will oppose Pluto. And if it's moving into Leo on June 11th, that means it will oppose Pluto the beginning of June. Then Saturn retrograde. So then Mars will moving through Leo. It will oppose Saturn. Wow. Hey, hey everybody. Oh, hey. Hey, just talking about the energy and how everybody's, June is a big month. So it, yeah, and then, wow, and then August. So once Mars gets into Leo, that will oppose Saturn in opposition to Jupiter. Wow. Hold on, I have to read. Oh, that's for something else. Yeah, the eclipse on the 10th. Yeah. 
And then on solstice, Jupiter begins a retrograde. And then June 25th, Neptune begins a retrograde. This is what I'm looking at, everybody. I went through my, it's not the ephemeris, but I was going through and highlighting all my notes. I don't know if this is showing up, but right here, um, Friday, June 25th. So that's going to be happening as the sun is in Cancer, so that's the water energy. But you see here, Neptune stations to go retrograde. And then on the 27th, Venus enters Leo. So then that, it'll take her a few, couple of a few days to get to Uranus degrees, who's also going to be going retrograde in through this cycle. And um, so that will activate that square. Wow. See, because there's so much in Aquarius still, technically, two rather large, huge celestial bodies, Saturn and Jupiter, and then so much in Taurus, and then as the moon and as these planets can move, some of them can move through so quickly, this square energy can be, is going to be activated all year long at different points. Oh, and that reminds me, we have another Saturn. Uranus, maybe? Probably, because they're so close in degree. I mean, they're within two degrees of orb right now. So... You know, that square. <clears throat> so it's um it's a hot witch summer, yeah? <laughs> oh my god, I got all the jokes. Well, yeah, like gas and brakes, gas and brakes. But also, let's think about how it can, how to breathe through it. And in, in all honesty, I feel like because when the eclipse happens, right after the Saturn stations, I feel like that's going to be like a big moment to kind of, so yeah, I think you're right. For those who watch this later, lots of movement in late June, but it's like bolts of lightning everywhere. Yeah, that, I mean, but that sounds kind of exciting. <laughs> <laughs> And also, I feel like with this Pluto retrograde, it's going to be really huge because we're building to our Pluto return. So I feel like this is that spring clean, you know, and you like, get, I was, I really was feeling informed consent. Like a lot of stuff, a lot of information is going to be unearthed in this. And then how to use that information. So those bolts of lightning can be ahas or landmines, you know. I like ahas. Let's go with ahas. I mean, we have so much air energy, you know, that first. And you might not have been here, but it was the shaman of discs. And, oh, my deck is under. Yeah, yeah, very much. Also this, Ace of Swords, excellent. But um, hold on, give me a second. Let me pull that card back out because I felt like it really did set the tone and was very 
the word exemplary, 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 it's not a usual word for me, but um, it's coming up, so. Gosh, this deck is so beautiful. It's like, until I do this, I sometimes, I don't see, no, that's not it. That's the daughter to that card. But it's like sometimes you don't see every card a lot, depending on the energy, you know? Some things just won't come up for a while. And um, I forget how beautiful this deck is. Oh, here we go. I'm seeing some of our cards. Now I'm like, did I leave her out somewhere? Oh, see? Look, this is such a beautiful card. This is the Mother Peace Tarot, and I love this deck because it's very specifically for the feminine. Not for feminine to use specifically. It honors the feminine in the sense that it's like a round deck where so many decks are square. Um, also, the creators, I can let that go, are two witches or maybe more than that. Interesting, because I don't know where this card is now. Um, oh, here it is. <laughs> this card. But two witches from the Bay Area. <clears throat> Probably a coven in the Bay Area, like Starhawk. I'm pretty sure these people are very connected. Like Karen Vogel, I think, and Vicki Noble. I sent my book to... <clears throat> my cousin witch in Seattle so I don't actually have it in front of me and I'm not gonna look it up right now this card sets the tone for our Taurus season we have our square happening with Aquarius energy so we have our psychic communications our ahas messages the information coming in this eagle representing that higher plane of knowing. Think about the scorpion and the Scorpio part of this square. Um, the eagle, the scorpion. What's the other of that triad? But yeah, so then you have the desert and the earth energy shaman of discs if anybody wants to take a screen pic of this or or google or look up this pic because it really for taurus season i feel like can kind of set the tone then also earlier we pulled this card which very much demonstrates this time as we're moving into with the Pluto retrograde times the nodes in Gemini and we have this eclipse coming and as Mercury is moving oh Mercury's in Taurus I'm about to have a Mercury return my Mercury is in Taurus um so Mercury will be going through its retrograde very much revelations and communications about it a lot of us are getting our you know we're seeing our spirit guides and i meant this card we're seeing our guides we're receiving our messages i was chatting with someone on tiktok and they you know they were feeling crow message Crows were their messenger in, in that moment. So, very much. And during that, as the Mercury retrograde and as these retrogrades, an inward a self care, I, I would also very much, I mean, you know, May Day, Beltane, May 1st, I mean, that is a huge good night, good night. I know I'm having a great time. Good night, good night. Um, it's a huge time for strikes, revolution, 
May Day is a general strike day just to honor worker solidarity. So, yeah. Okay. Ha ha ha. Early stages of what I was just saying, the daughter. This is the daughter of discs, which is the still very wise but earlier stages. This is like the newer witch compared to like when you're you've seen that meme, you know, I'm awake now and they're all like, you know, decked out and then when you finally get like grounded into your practice, you're like, okay, I don't have to be so flashy about it. She's flashy about it. <laughs> and that may be a bad example. <clears throat> This is the early stages of taking the messages. This is receiving the messages. Whereas the shaman, she was on her horse. She was on her horse and had already like, the messages were behind her. She knew what she was doing. Like she got her mission and she was on her way to, <laughs> very much. She had gotten her mission. She, what is it? She accepted and she was on her way. And here she is on her way. So hopefully a women's movement or a non-binary, like a gen strike. A general strike and a gender strike. That's my prayer. Okay, the sun is setting and I'm going to be signing off as well. Bottom card, I was like, what's the bottom of the deck? It feels bright. <sighs> okay. Sweet dreams, everyone. Happy new beginnings. I do love pulling cards. I'm about to actually move into a new space. I only have a couple more weeks here, and then I'm... I'm on an adventure, hashtag broomstick express. <laughs> exactly this. Breakthroughs, happy Taurus season. Oh yeah, sweet dreams. I actually thought when I sent you that sweet dreams message, I thought it was like 11 o'clock your time. <laughs> I just realized when I was tracking a minute ago before I popped on that it was still rather kind of early. So for normal people, I go to bed when it gets dark. Okay. Good night. Sweet dreams, everyone. Take care. Take care. Big, big weeks. Breakthroughs. Deep breaths. <laughs>